Uh, so, welcome to this uh, mushroom introduction and uh, uh, thanks for letting me speak here at Finca de Luz <coughs> Serena and uh, ¿Cómo se llama el ciudad? Serena La Gardens Serena La Gardens and uh, yes, today I'm going to talk about uh, cultivating mushrooms and my name is Chris uh, and I'm from Finland and uh, four years ago I didn't know anything about mushrooms like absolutely nada and uh, then I saw a YouTube video uh, which is called six ways how mushrooms can save the world by this most famous mycologist in the world mm -hmm. uh, Paul Stamets and I got really inspired about this this YouTube video and then I I, I bought his books uh, one of the most influential book is called Mycelium Running and uh, this uh, YouTube talk is based on this Mycelium Running book so that's how I started and uh, uh, I, I was just doing it for for myself as a hobby at first and then 2014 I decided to make a company in Finland about this because nobody was selling uh, mushroom spawn so spawn is like this uh, what you see here it's uh, mushrooms growing the mycelium growing in any biomass it can be like anything organic uh, carbon based and it will grow there especially the oyster mushroom and this spawn is used for inoculate inoculada so if you have a mixture of uh, some organic matter so you take one part of this and five parts of the mixture and then you spread it around it so the mycelium is going to spread and uh, my plan is to use this oyster mushroom for growing coffee here at the farm because the coffee is right there on the other side of the street and just this morning I went there and it's amazing it's just the morning and it's like a big bucket full of coffee so this you have an abundance of resources here over the street and then uh, 2015 we lived in Innsbruck in Austria and I was doing an internship in the biggest spawn provider of uh, Europe uh, and they they distribute mushrooms to all over the all over Europe for home growers not the actual mushrooms but the equipment to grow the mushroom and uh, then do you do you know what the mushroom is? Does anyone have an idea? It's microorganism. Microorganism, yeah. Yeah, like a huge network in the ground. Yes. It's making different plants, different kind of plants together also, providing them with the nutrition also. Yeah. Like it's a huge network. But what, yeah, what is the actual mushroom? They, tra what? they transform some stuff into other stuff. So as they absorb stuff, and they also give other stuff, I think. Yeah, that's true also, yes. They're breaking down wood. Yeah, bre breaking down organic matter. So uh, they're like the primary uh, decomposers of the ecosystems. So they recycle plant debris, uh, but there's this radical uh, mycologist and from the U.S. His name is Peter McCoy, and he's a former uh, social activist, and uh, he claims that it's more like not decomposing; it's more like recomposing, because mm. it's actually making, you know the wood biomass available to the plants 
So the actual mushroom is the fruit body of the mycelium. And only 10% of the of the mushrooms in the world are identified. And 10 of them is what we call mushrooms. And their other uh, task is to filter microbes and they also uh, filter sediment runoff and they restore the soil uh, by uh, recomposing wood mostly. So, uh, did you understand what the mushroom is now? Yeah. yeah. It's the savior of the world. Yeah. So for for example in America there's this American squirrel who is uh using 90% of his calorie intake from mushrooms and mycelium. And it's he's such a genius squirrel that uh he's actually collecting the mycelium and the mushrooms and brings it to the nest and and dries it for the for the coming winter. Um it's amazing. And uh, then about the reproduction of the of the mushroom. Does ev everyone know what the spore is? The, yeah. the yeah. spore from from the mushroom. Like the it will be like the seed, no? Like uh, similar to the seed. Yeah, it's like a, a seed from a plant, but it's a spore. And. Uh, is any does anyone studied biology here? No, I'm not really good at this, so I have to read it. So it's a uh, each mating of two spores expresses one of several possible phenotypes from the same genome. So, so this means that you need two spores which match together to start a mycelium, like the network which grows underground. So all the all, most of the mushrooms are reproducing with the spores and they start to form the fruiting body, the actual mushroom, when the moisture, the nutrition and the temperature are right. So you need these three moisture and temperature and the nutrition is usually the wood because all the most of the mushrooms are eating wood what we can cultivate. Okay. So when the mushroom releases the spores, it it hits on the on the wood or any biomass, and it starts to grow a thread, a thread, and the thread starts to branch everywhere, and this is called a hypai. I don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe hypai. <laughs> so, so and then when two hypai meet, then uh, they match, and you know the mycelium is forming. And then uh, the first sign of the mushroom is called a pinhead, when you see this small starting of the mu mushroom. The head? Pin, it's called pinhead. This thing like this? Yeah, so the first sign of, of the mushroom. So when, when the mushroom is releasing the spores, so there's a four, force of 25,000 Gs experienced by the space shuttle astronauts so there's like much higher force than the space shuttle astronauts are experiencing with when the mushroom is pull, like throwing the spores in the air and there's this one mushroom which is called Ganoderma aplanatum so it releases 30 million spores 30 million per one day and and half of them has the the DNA code for producing a fertile offspring. So every spore, spore has the half of the DNA code. Did you did you understand this? Yes. So when I look at this farm, there's a lot of like uh, these trunks of wood lying around here, mm -hmm. and like up there on the mountains. When the rainy season is on, there's a lot of mushrooms and the spores are distributed around the island. So what you could do on this farm is to get all these logs 
and keep them moist somewhere in the shade so the natural mushrooms might appear in these logs if you want that if you don't want to use the logs for cultivating a certain species and then also they have a lot of organic matter but when it's in a big piles so they dry they dry really quickly so what you could do here is spread the organic matter all around the, uh, the empty spaces and when it rains so it keeps more moisture which is like crucial for mushroom growth this, this is the plan too. yeah you have to spread it yes yes he already told me about yeah. the spread shredding and Lucille was telling me this like example about how the mycelium is spreading in nature so uh, there was a dead rat what they buried like under the soil and then they put this uh, Lucille how do you say the illuminating material which was fluorescent. Fluorescent. Flu fluorescent material fluorescent. was put inside the rat and then uh, uh, they they watch like how spread the nutrition from the rat spread around the forest in the after they put the rat there so even after one day uh, the nutrition were one kilometer away from the rat what? so the, the it's like a, a giant network like a worldwide like a internet underground which is there and there's uh, another experiment uh, with the mycelium is with the, uh, you know, a maze, a labyrinth. So they put the, in the front where the mycelium starts to grow, food source, and at the, at the end, a food source. And then they watched how the mycelium was growing. So it disregarded the de dead ends and it went like straight through the labyrinth to the food source. So. It's, it, it operates at the level of complexity that exceeds the computational powers of most of our advanced supercomputers in the world. It's so, so intelligent. An, another good example is like the, uh, the Tokyo uh, public transport system, which is the most advanced in the world. So what they did is they... they they had uh, a model with the, all the different cities around Tokyo and they wanted to make the most efficient like tra public transport system in the city so what they did is they dropped the mycelium in the middle and they watched how it started to grow <laughs> it's, it's amazing yes <laughs>so every time you go to the forest and you walk in the forest so the mycelium under your feet knows where you are it's it's knowing every step where you take and it awakens every time when it rains so it's awake and it's highly aware and it reacts to change collectively and uh, have the long-term health of the host environment in mind long-term health of this host environment in mind so it's completely opposite of capitalism. The mycelium has everything he thinks of the whole. <coughs> and it can expand to 1000 times the acres of size and it achieved the greatest land mass of any individual organism on the planet. Just the mycelium. And we are really, uh, animals are really related to fungi so 600 million years ago we shared a common ancestry with the fungi so the animals are actually evolved from the fungi the only difference between a human and an animal is that that we have our stomachs and we break down the food inside the stomachs but the mushroom it doesn't have a stomach so it's uh, secreting acids and enzymes which break down the food like outside do you understand the difference between the yes, yes.
So, like many claim that it's the Earth's natural internet, especially Paul Stamets. And when you look at the cosmos, and you compare it with your brain cells, and then you compare it with uh, internet, and you compare it with mycelium, so they're very similar. All of them are looking really same. So it, it had an alliance with plants over 700 billion years ago, this uh, mycelium. So you know 250 million years there was a, a meteorite which uh, darkened the whole world. And another one hit like uh, 185 million years when the dinosaurs were dead. But uh, because this little a creature or the the mushroom it doesn't need sunlight so guess guess who survived <laughs> yeah so the whole earth was darkened under this like massive like you know cloud of airborne debris because the meteorite came in with such a high power uh, but the fungi was working it was like strong <laughs>